the Premier took six weeks to make a decision about his personal future. Now the people of British Columbia should have the opportunity to decide the future of Bill van der Zelm and his government. We don't have the kind of clean, open, and honest government that's required. We don't have affordable housing. We've got waiting lists for surgery. There are a whole series of issues, Rafe, that you've been talking about, that I've been talking about, that need to be addressed, that are not going to be addressed now. Good evening. Last night's announcement by Bill Van Zalm to stay on as Premier resolves nothing. It guarantees the Socred leadership crisis will continue. And like many British Columbians, I am fed up with the Premier's self-indulgent preoccupation with his personal future. His decision to stay means that Bill Van Zalm's personal future will continue to dominate the political agenda. Last night we witnessed a demonstration by a man who has learned nothing and holds steadfastly to his own peculiar view of the facts. Let me mention just three issues. First, the record speaks for itself on the question of abortion. The Premier and his cabinet went out of their way to use all the instruments of government to impose their narrow views on the women of British Columbia. In doing so, the Premier and his cabinet attempted to defy the Supreme Court of Canada, and British Columbians were forced to take their own government to court to make them obey the law. Well, I'm proud to say to you, I'm pro-choice. And furthermore, under a new Democrat government, no women in B.C. will be denied her right to freedom of choice. Second, remarkably, the Premier once again tried to defend his government's decision to ban the AIDS video. This video was produced and paid for by the people of B.C. who know that the number of B.C. teenagers testing positive for the AIDS virus doubled in this last year alone. The Premier can invent all the elaborate excuses he wants. The facts clearly show he and his health ministers once again imposed their own narrow personal views. Our young men and women are deserving of their government's respect, not censorship. Third, the Premier said he knew nothing about the Night Street pub scandal. Well, again, the record is clear. When he found out about the interference, the Premier showed no leadership. The Premier did nothing. Saying he's apologized for it cannot cover up the fact that the current Minister of Municipal Affairs condoned a public lie and remains in office with the full support of the Premier and his Cabinet. Quite simply, the Premier's remarks last night had more to do with fantasy than the facts as British Columbians know them. This nonsense has to stop. British Columbians want more than this from their government. After last night, we're still waiting for a government that's prepared to act decisively in our interests. This morning, British Columbians here were still saying, we need immediate action on critical issues. I can tell you, and back it up, that there is enough land to develop all the housing we need over the next 20 years without touching one acre of agricultural land. Where is it? In the Lower Mainland. In the it's lower all mainland. over the Lower Mainland. It's in Surrey, it's in Coquitlam, it's in the redevelopment of areas of Vancouver. It, there is enough land to take care of our current housing needs for the foreseeable future without touching one acre of agricultural land. I have put forward, New Democrats have put forward, the following proposals. First, we've got to get young people, young families, into their own homes. We need to have a starter home program in this province. I've already talked to the development industry about that. That means that we encourage the development community and municipalities to accept zero lot line, patio, cluster, small lot, townhouse, starter homes for our young families. Now, if we had two substantial programs to do those, uh, starter home, uh, nonprofit cooperative housing in British Columbia, those people would then come out of the existing rental stock. You would get back to a healthier 2 to 3 percent vacancy rate in the rental market, and that along with a rent review process, uh, I think, would lead us to a healthy uh, housing market. Rent review, but not rent control? Absolutely. Not rent it. control? No, I don't believe in rent okay. controls. and never have. We need protection for landlords and tenants. We need to bring back to the Reynoldsman's office a show-cause uh, procedure to, for rent justification. 
I think we've got to have a growth strategy for British Columbia because we have too much growth in Greater Vancouver and Victoria and not enough in the north and the interior. So I think those communities have got to be made more attractive uh, by way of universities, proper health care, uh, making the advantage of moving to those areas known to businesses and to people in terms of less expensive industrial land, housing, the amenities of the Kootenays of the interior of the north. That growth strategy is required. Let's zero in on the environment. Citizens in this province, Rafe, have come to the breaking point. They've said, enough is enough. We're not going to be poisoned anymore. Strong action is required, not just against corporate polluters, but to clean up public pollution, which is 80% of the pollution in this province. Last night, again, in his speech, the Premier said he had full and complete respect for all religions and for people of all faiths. And uh, I wonder, does that mean that he publicly, for the first time, will acknowledge that the reference to Christian principles in the Social Credit Constitution will be amended? We don't have any reference in our Constitution uh, to uh, upholding only Christian principles. We believe in democracy, and that includes freedom of religion, and we have that explicitly in our beliefs. I damn near got you fired up. It was kind of fun to watch. Clearly, it's time for a change. Critical issues in our province, important to you and your family, to working people, and to business, are being held hostage by Bill Van Zalm and his government. Waiting lists for surgery grow longer and longer. Pollution threatens our environment and the livelihood of British Columbians. Tenants and young families are being thrown out on the streets. And now our province must endure a continued SoCred leadership crisis. The people's business continues to take a back seat to SoCred infighting. Nothing demonstrates the real cost to our province of this infighting more than the fiasco of the Expo land sale. The evidence of just how bad a deal this has been for our province is still emerging. But one thing is clear. The SoCred government lied to us when they told us it was a great deal. Well, because of their efforts to give special favors for friends and then interfere in the bidding process, at the end of the day, they've left us to foot a pollution cleanup bill that may well approach $100 million. They sold one quarter of downtown Vancouver, the largest urban development site in North America, your property, and lost your money while doing it. Some business deal. Social Credit talks about free enterprise, what they really mean is privilege, profit, and power for their friends. Social credit has come to regard our government as their personal property. They're not listening because they no longer think they have to. They've been in government too long. It's called arrogance of power. When a premier and his government start to believe that they and they alone have the right to govern, it's time for a change. I've spent the last two years listening to you and sharing ideas all across B.C. British Columbians are confident about our future. We know what our province can be. And tonight I want to tell you about three areas that show the direction I want to take our province. I want to build an open and honest democracy for our province. Open, honest government that deals with all citizens with an even hand. I want you to have power the power to shape your community and build your family's future. Decisions about your future should not and will not be imposed from Victoria in a Harcourt government. People like you have good ideas about how we use our natural resources, our forests, and our tax dollars to enhance our quality of life. But to make these a reality, you must have the tools to get on with the job. I'm committed to giving communities like yours more direct responsibility over crown lands, forests, and renewable resources. I'm committed to restoring greater responsibility for choosing and starting community services that meet your needs. Family and youth services, health clinics, child care, economic development. We must restore to BC a trust between you and your government. A clean government that doesn't stand in your way, nor give special favors to some while neglecting others. All my political life has been devoted to building a thriving democracy where your views count. It's this leadership that I want to bring to our province. I want to build a sustainable future. Our province is blessed with a magnificent natural environment. The uniqueness of every region is astonishing. 
And yet the social credit government has failed as stewards of our natural resources. The highest priority for me is, is to balance our environment and economic growth. Social credit says we must have economic growth before we can protect our environment. I don't accept that. As a parent, I want my son to live in a BC that is a world model for sustainable, environmentally sensitive growth. We can have a prosperous economy, but it must be sustainable. As your Premier, I want our prosperous future secured by making sure we replace every tree we cut, by getting the greatest value in jobs from the trees we cut, by settling outstanding Aboriginal land claims, by making big polluters pay, and by protecting our unique wilderness areas. I'm committed to a clean environment and creating jobs from our resources without harming our environment. I want to ensure women have freedom of choice. From Bill Van Ozel and his government, we get 1950s rhetoric to deal with today's realities. Women know this all too well. You've been ignored and patronized by the circuit government, and your right to freedom of choice is being denied. The Socred government is simply out of touch with the realities that are facing women on family life, in the workplace, and on the question of abortion. As women take on leadership roles in all walks of life, it's also time your government made equality of opportunity a reality for all women. As Premier, I want women in my government to have power. And I will appoint women to leadership roles in Cabinet and in key agencies of our province. And with a new Democrat government, Hospital boards will not have the power to deprive women of their right to freedom of choice. This is the direction I want us to take together as a province. It's a direction I believe most of you share. It's one that will bring security and stability for our family's future. One that ensures a greater say for you and your family while assuring business can sustain itself and work within a clean environment and one with government embracing an open and honest approach with people. This direction is supported by my commitment to affordable housing, Aboriginal rights, workers' rights, regional fairness, quality health care, quality education, and decent pensions. Bill Van Erzelm and the Socred say it can't be done. I say it can. Isn't it time we move beyond a government that takes you for granted and move towards a new generation, more in tune with your future? All my public life has been devoted to ensuring the government doesn't shut you out and to bring people together to build on our common interests rather than exploit differences. This social credit government says this can't be done without them. They say our future economic prosperity is completely dependent on the survival of their party. I don't accept this. I believe with all my heart in the great people of this province. It's you and your family whose enterprise and hard work are building our great future, a sustainable future where we will have more exports of manufactured products and become a world leader in sustainable resource development, environmental action, and new technology. With economic leadership that recognizes the contribution of public, private, and individual enterprise, with a business community who understand the ground rules I've always supplied. Treat your workers fairly, pay your fair share of taxes, and don't mess up the environment. And with the government committed to living within the means of British Columbians, and that means fair taxes and balanced budgets. With your support, that's the leadership I want for our province. Ask yourself, does social credit have a monopoly in our province? Does social credit own our future? Isn't it time we got beyond the tired old rhetoric? Bill Van Der Zelm says he won't be changed. I say it's time we changed the government. Good night.